If you've ever used bows, it can feel very repetitive with the majority of the gameplay being jump and shoot, roll and shoot, and repeat. But what if I told you that with the click of one button, you can turn this loop into a high octane first person shooter, albeit with a steep skill floor, and then you too can traumatize people enough that they resort to cheating. Now, you've seen it talked about a lot in relation to certain spells and items like Blood Boon, Giant Swing Take Thee, and Throwing Pots. However, framing with a bow is something entirely different. You need to time your dodges, memorize animations, and quickly flick to your opponent's head to get that sweet, sweet headshot. headshot. This little shot of dopamine you get from headshots is what led me to teach myself how to use this crosshair for amazing things. Except, it's not as simple as putting your crosshair over your opponent's head. You'll need to consider... Okay, yes, the crosshair does work when you lose an arrow while your opponent is standing still. But when your opponent is moving, it gets much harder since you need to think about how far away a random pixel was from you. And I'm sure you can imagine the struggle when your else moves like a cockroach exposed to light. So before you pick up a bow, you need to know which one to pick up. For anything involving free aim, you need a short bow. This also includes the black bow, which has the best damage and range, but it's locked to the barrage as war. Your choice of bow is up to you, just avoid any bow with other short bows moveset, which means 62% of the bows you can use are trash. Though the other bows have uses, you want to pick either a short bow or black bow for your build. You can do four kinds of attacks of bows, a jump shot and a landing shot, aka your bread and butter, a roll shot, a backstep shot, and a sprinting shot. There is an issue though, one of the major issues with free aim is that it locks you to a slow walk, meaning you won't be able to do the sprint shot. However, you can jump, roll, and backstep while free aiming, so you still have mobility and offensive options to use. How about we talk about height over bore? If you're familiar with guns, you'll know about a height over bore. But if you're not, look at it like this. Just because you have a scope, doesn't always mean it'll shoot in the exact center of your sights. You'll need to adjust for height at certain distances. Eldering has something similar, except your gun changes offset from bore depending on how you're standing. Imagine the barrel is looking something like this. It's a little confusing, let me try to simplify this. So, imagine it like this. Here we have a Cartesian grid. You'll know it from a primary school math class. The middle, 0, 0, is your arrow being loose from the standstill. And your jump would be here, and roll shot is here. These would be the origins of your arrow when you do their respective attack. When you loose an arrow, you have to compensate for the strange origins of the arrows. And remember, now always try to go to the point you're aiming when you lose the arrow. It seems unintuitive, cause, well, it is. But you can build up an instinct for how it works when you get used to it. If you see my clips, I sometimes will aim far above my opponent's head, and the reason for that is that I know where the skybox is. It'll always be the same distance away from me, meaning it's the most consistent place to aim for roll shots. Once you've got the hang of it, you can start to get consistent headshots and maybe even some flicks. One thing you need to know is that this harmonization system from soft implemented can and will screw you over when your opponent is doing an animation where they raise their arms above their head, where you would normally aim to get a headshot. To the count of this, I say you either gamble and aim at their head, or roll away. I find you can usually chain at least two headshots before your opponent can roll out of it. With that being said, I will say that sometimes you'll want to aim directly at their head. The two most consistent examples I can think of is when your opponents make a beeline towards you, and when you're chaining headshots. However, this can vary from case to case, use your own judgement. Originally, I was going to have a section dedicated to understanding staggers and how they relate to headshots, but I made my first draft, had a QA'd, and learned from Sand Encrypted Tracker that headshots are confusing. It seems like no one has a clear answer on if they can infinite or not, so I can't confidently say what's what regarding headshots frame data. What I can confidently say is that you can consistently chain at least two headshots together. And from my nearly year-long experience with this playstyle, this seems to be a universal truth with all matches, but I can't properly explain it with numbers and facts. Now, while it's possibly only a free aim bow, sometimes it's not the most reliable. To make a bow really shine, you should also practice locked on archery. Remember when I said to forget the running attack? Well bring it back, since we're getting into more competitive archery. The running attack is very good at chipping health and applying pressure, and it is way less predictable than the normal running attacks you can free him with. 
Lockdown attacks can also apply statuses more consistently when you're in your opponent's face. You can also free and sprinting attacks by moving your player body in the direction you want to aim. Moving on from locked on archery, I'm going to save melee options for later since I think consumables, at least most of the time, are way better since they won't force you to offhand your bow. Here's what I think about various consumables that you can use. Spark Aromatic is a must-have. It covers a wide area and can serve as an impromptu melee option to roll catch or punish someone who's too aggressive, serving as a good get off me option when aimed at your feet too. The projectile Spark Aromatic can also headshot, though it's much harder to aim. The Stone Gravity Fan is something I always keep on hand since it can very consistently stagger people unless they have hyper armor. And like Spark Aromatic, it works in a wide area. But it also works great as area denial, which can make it easier for you to buff yourself or heal status effects. The Magic Scraps and Cuckoo Glenstone can be good for tricking your opponent into running into a straight, predictable line, which can be perfect if you're using status arrows or a thrown status pot. Aside from that, it just encourages them to dodge. But otherwise, it doesn't do much damage unless you have intelligence. But there aren't any bows that scale an int, so unless you've decided to do a magic archer, it probably won't be doing much damage. And even then, you can just use Star Shower or Stars of Ruin to force dodges. You can do this with the Ranker Pot too, but pots are a precious commodity when you main bow. I also suggest carrying pots on you. There are a lot of pots you can choose from, so I'll go over various pots you can use. Pots that only do damage like Fire, Lightning, and Magic are generally the worst ones you can pick. The flat damage they do won't mean much when attacks are still telegraphed, but they can be more useful as rope pots to quickly deal some damage. But when comparing Throne Pots, the Freezing Pot already does damage and freezes your opponent, which is amazing for you since it lowers the damage negation, meaning your headshots, which instead of doing a minuscule amount of damage, will be doing a tiny amount of damage. And the Freezing Pot will also lower the Stamina Regeneration Rate. It's also a good idea to carry a sidearm on you, because let's not pretend shields don't exist. For this, I recommend a weapon with either Determination or Roll a Nice Resolve. A weapon with either of these Ashes of War will deal significantly more stamina damage than regular attacks, and they will also deal more damage directly to their health if you're using something like a Scythe. Alternatively, assuming you want an Ash of War for something other than punishing shields, Flame Strike is a tried and true option for a player style that avoids using melee even when you're up against the wall. It works a lot like Spark Automatic and will reliably punish players who are overly aggressive, but it has the bonus of having a lingering hitbox, which can catch players Spark Automatic can't. You can also consider using different weapon types. I've recently tried out offlines and past and straight swords, and I think they synergize well with bows. There are players that are just too aggressive for me to properly play against with pure archery and consumables, and that's where these came in. The offlines was good for training hits, but the straight swords were very good for punishing people who were too aggressive and in my face. Plus. It's also good at punishing boluses. Of course, I haven't tested every weapon, so I encourage you to experiment for yourself. Hey there! So, I just want to finish this tutorial off with a little more personal section that I like to say things I couldn't really fit into the video. So first off, I want to say this took a lot longer than I expected. I was you know, got sidetracked with life, work, school, crap. Not that poor thing, but I got to get sidetracked, so for its quality, I don't think the time really was worth it. But hopefully it's good enough to get some people into this hobby. Um, I'd also like to say that if you do want to post clips to, about archery, just be warned that people do hate archers. It's honestly kind of a fighting game thing. People hate stoners, which archers are. So if you do want to end up posting somewhere, I'd say avo avoid servers like the other ring feed subreddit and Discord. Discord especially since the staff there are less than professional. Instead I'd say go to the the bad red Discord and subreddit. The mods there are amazing, community amazing. Just, I cannot recommend it enough. It's it's a great place to be. Next off I wanna say I did want to do a section about console free aim stuff, but uh I couldn't fit it into the video, I didn't know where to put it, I didn't have enough time to do it. So instead I'm going to put it here, I'm going to tell you to go follow Crown King on YouTube. He did some training stuff and I talked to, talked to them, but uh, I couldn't fit it in, so here it is. Just go sit them on YouTube, it's pretty good. Uh, next one I want to say... The thank yous, yes, thank yous. First I want to say 
thank you to a streamer you might not know, but he's a good streamer, good guy. This guy's name is Mr. Forgetful. I haven't talked to him in a while, but he did buy me Elden Ring when I was banned. And because of that, I eventually found out my playstyle that I like. And without him, I probably wouldn't be here. So go give him a sub on Twitch. I'll link in the description down below. Also, I'd like to say thank you to Only Waifu. I'm sure you all know about Only Waifu, but if you don't, they've helped me just grow my channel, helped me QA, and just really make it this video. But yeah, I'll post the link to their channel in the description, but they just been just great help, really. And next off, I want to thank the QA testers. First, and I'll just list them out as they go. Uh, Patches Law, great guy. Terry Weasel, Sen, and Yaki San. Without their help, I would probably have a much worse video, even if it is not up to a standard I like. But without them, it'd be much worse. So I'll post their channels and Twitches and all the relevant relevant uh, account information in the description. Please give them like a, a sub, follow, etc., whatever it is on whatever platform. But yeah, I just want to say really thank you for watching this. It took way longer than I'd like to say. It's yeah. But yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, if you do decide to stream, just go have fun. Don't get upset by people shit pot you. But yeah, have fun. Enjoy your adventures.